Department of Education through the Office of Undersecretary for Administration, DepEd OUA, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology, ICDS EdTech, invites you to join its first ever international multidisciplinary webinar series in collaboration with the Global Educators Network Association of Teachers of English as a Foreign Language, Jan Tefel, Thailand. This 3D webinar series will gather experts and specialists from different areas of study and from all parts of the globe to equip and empower educators in their areas of specialization integrated through educational technology. This event is a convergence of resource speakers and expertise to further teachers' ability to answer the challenges of these changing times through topics with educational technology integration. Be updated and save this following day. Solo Educalidad! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Elaine Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Ayan, hello, magandang hapon po sa lahat ng nanonood ng ating Itulay Online Tutorial. Once again, I'm Tutor Kat para sa subject na Media and Information. So tayo po ngayon ay nasa week 7 na ng quarter 4. Handa na ba kayo? Ayan, so pinabati ko po lahat ng mga senior high school students, parents, and teachers. I-share nyo na po ang ating video. Simula na natin. Okay, para po sa ating quarter 4, week 7, ang ating pong topic ay Manipulative and Multimedia Dimensions of Information and Media. Ang ating pong module ay downloaded mula sa Deped Commons, gawa ng Region 4A, Calabarzon. Once again, I'm Tutor Kat para sa subject na MIL at ang ating time slot ay every 4.40 to 5.20 p.m. At napapanood po tayo sa mga sumusunod na Facebook page and YouTube channels. Okay, para sa quarter 4, week 7, ang ating pong most essential learning competency ay today we will describe the different dimensions of manipulative information and media. Multimedia information and media. Para naman sa ating objectives, una, we will explain what manipulatives and interactive media are. We will compare the different platforms and uses of manipulatives, interactive media software. And we will also define multimedia and its characteristics. We will also identify the advantages and limitations of multimedia. Okay, so before that, let us have our first activity for today. So sa ating pong module, kung hawak niyo po yung mga module, so para sa ating unang a learning task, we will identify the dimensions, two dimensions involved in the following multimedia content. So check lang po, we will check the corresponding boxes. So may kita niyo po dyan, meron tayong text, visual, audio, and manipulative. Sa mga nakaraang linggo, na-discuss na po natin, no? alam niyo na ang mga sumusunod na dimensions, text, visual, audio, and 
text, visual, and audio. And today we will have manipulatives and multimedia. So, simulan natin sa number one. Hiraya Manawari, an e-novel by Chris Oka. Access through Wattpad. So, with this content, ano kaya yung dimension na ginamit dito? Again, pipili tayo ng dalawa and lalagyan natin ng check mark. So, if you want to participate, just type in our comment section. Okay, para sa number one, kung ang inyong sagot ay text, so tama kayo kasi ang Wattpad, di ba, it's an e-novel online um, platform siya, website, kung saan pwede tayo magbasa ng mga novels. And it is also considered as manipulative. Later, malalaman niyo kung bakit siya under ng manipulative. Number two, magic microphone advertised by a singing salesperson in a mall. Yeah, nakakita na ba kayo ng magic microphone? Yeah. So, this example, sa so number two, it is audio and it is also visual. Okay? Kasi yung magic microphone, di ba, hindi na siya ginagamit sa pagkanta. Nakikita din natin sa screen yung lyrics and meron din siya mga backgrounds. Third, instructions on how to cook pancit canton on a packaging. Di ba sa mga packaging ng pancit canton, nakikita niyo instructions on step 1 hanggang sa dulo, paano manuduto yung noodles. So, anong dimension ang ginamit ko? Okay, so ang sagot dyan ay text and visuals. Kasi hindi lang naman siya step 1. Uh, maglagay ng tubig sa, sa kaserola. Yan. Meron din siyang uh, picture na katumbas. Okay, and then next. Number four. TV advertisements of a shampoo brand featuring Sarah Heronimo. Yan, dito medyo alam na natin, di ba? It's audiovisual kasi nga, it's a commercial. Okay, and number five, textbook for the blind. Yan, for number five, this is purely text and manipulative. Okay, maraming salamat sa lahat na participate sa ating comment section na nanonood na ating ito live today. Okay, now let's proceed with our topic. Manipulative and multimedia dimensions of information and media. So, ano nga ba yung tinatawag na manipulative media and information? And tuwing kailan natin masasabi na isang content is a multimedia. Okay? So, yun ang malalaman natin. And para sa ating unang activities, so for this activity, you will sort the toys. Okay? So, may kita nyo dyan sa screen, meron ako dyan 9 toys. Yan, nasa module din yan. Merong 9 toys. So, aayusin lang natin yung mga toys na yan sa kanilang mga proper beans. So, take note that the beans are not labeled. So, wala pa siyang label. So, it's up to you how will you determine or classify these toys. Okay? So, for this activity, walang tama at maling sagot. So, nasa sa inyo, kung kayo ay bibigyan ng itong siyam na naroan na nakikita nyo sa screen, paano nyo sila ikaklassify or aayusin? So, para sa activity sa module na yan, isusulat nyo lang yung item number Tatlong laruan, okay? So, may katumba siya dyan. Meron tayo dyan Lego, may manika, may Rubik's Cube, meron dyan teddy bear, crayons, jigsaw puzzle, and puzzle box. Meron tayo dyan clay, tsaka toy hammer. Yan. So, medyo madya-challenge tayo dito. Kung tayo yung nakutusan ng nanay natin, bagay sa mga laruan. At yan yung mga laruan natin. Paano natin sila aayusin? At ano ang itatawag natin doon sa grupo ng mga laruan na yan? So, with this, tinlasipay ko siya sa tatlo. May tinatawag ako ng laruan na simulators. May mga larang builders and puzzles. Okay? So, ano kaya yung simulators? Simulan natin sa simulators. Those toys allow you to practice an actual task. So, based dito sa siyam na laruan, ano kaya yung may tutuloy natin simulators? Sige nga po, type in the comment section. Okay. So, just type in the number po if you want to participate sa ating discussion today. Okay. 
Ang mga simulators ay number two, the dolls. Four, yung teddy bears and yung toy hammer. So, bakit sila kinonsider na simulators? Okay? So, kung sabi nga dito sa kanyang definition, di ba? Simulators, those that allow you to practice an actual task. Okay? So, ano kaya yung nire-represent ng mga toys na to na meron sa totoong buhay? Okay? Di ba yung mga uh, mga batang babae, di ba? Love nila maglaro ng mga dolls. Kasi feeling nila yung mga dolls na yun, yun yung representation or nag-represent sa mga babies. And yung mga stuffed toy, di ba? Yung mga animals. Di ba? So yung kanilang katumbas. And yung hammer, meron man tayo talaga tinatawag na martilyo. So at ito, boy, yung mga uh, ginagaya yung mga tatay nilang karpentero. Yung naglalaro sila ng, kunyari, bumubuo sila ng bahay and the like. So, yun yung mga simulators. Next is yung builders. Those that allow you to create something out of plain materials. From nothing to something. So, that's what you mean by builders. So, dun sa show na laruan kanina, ano kaya yung mga builders natin? Una is yung crayon. And we have the clay and the puzzle. So, builders needs to activate their creativity and imagination to come up with something. Ako ang favorite ko dyan is yung puzzle and the clay. Kasi in that, with that kind of toys, mas nabibuild yung um, skills, di ba? Yung pagmamanipulate ng hands sa ating mga baguettes, di ba? Ng mga bata. And at the same time, nade-develop ang kanilang creativity. And puzzles. Puzzles, tumutukoy ito sa mga laruan that allows you to solve a code. Okay? It could be um, pieces of something na kailangan pagsamasamahin para mabuo. Or concepts na kailangan mo i-figure out para malaman mo yung main point. Okay? So, ano yung mga uh, toys na under ng puzzle sa mga pinakita ko kanina? We have this, number six, the jigsaw puzzle, the rubrics cube, and the Puzzle box. Okay, so kayo, paano nyo siya kinlasify? Okay, so I hope uh, you are participating by typing in the, in the comment section. Okay, so actually, ang mga laruan, di ba, mga laruan, pwede natin sila i-classify sa dalawa. May tinatawag tayong traditional toys, tsaka mga digital toys. Yan, yung mga traditional toys, yun yung mga childhood toy or non digital manipulative. Yun yung mga laruan na hindi ginagamit ng kuryente, ng battery. It's purely manual. While the digital, it refers to a game applications and the like. Yung mga games na uh, ini-install sa cellphone, sa laptop, or sa tablet. So let me give you an example. So ano yung mga example ng traditional toy? I have here the clay. And yan. So ano yung mga magagawa sa clay? Anything actually. It's um, unlimited. Basta kaya mo siyang gawin, ma-imagine, and mabuo mo siya using your hands. And sa digital, this is my example. We have here the Pokemon Go. Yeah, very exciting yan. Laro na yan. Kung familiar kayo dyan, di ba, para makakatch ka ng Pokemon, hindi ka lang nasa loob ng bahay, kundi lalabas ka para mahanap mo kung saan located yung iba't ibang klase ng Pokemon. So, kayo, ano yung favorite traditional and digital toys mo? So, type in the comment section. Okay. So, sa ngayon, pansin natin, di ba, na mas nauuso ang mga digital toys. Maybe dahil nga nasa 21st century na tayo and also nasa digital era na tayo na pinaka-accessible, pinaka-nakaka-enjoy na gamitin dahil nga available mga gadgets sa mga bata sa bawat isa sa atin, is digital games ang ating mga ginagamit at pinakasikat. Pero actually, yung mga traditional toys, nakaka-enjoy din yung gawin. Um, hindi lang tayo nag enjoy at the same time, marami pang nade-develop sa atin. Okay, so I have titled that as my favorite manipulatives. So meron tayong question dyan sa ating module. So, sagutin niyo lang po yung question dyan. Ano yung favorite manipulatives niyo sa traditional and digital? Okay, so what is the impact of this on me? So, kayo, ano yung naging impact ng inyong mga paboritong traditional at digital toys? 
for me, ang naging impact niyan is um, na-develop, lalo doon sa traditional, since my favorite toy before is yung play chama puzzles, is yung aking creativity and imagination. And while yung mga digital naman, like Mobile Legends, Pokemon Go, it helps me to think strategically, uh, critical thinking, and ana analysis. Yan, yun yung mga na-develop sa akin. So let's define manipulative media. So pag sinabi natin manipulative media, these are tools or devices used for hands-on development. Developmental, educational, information, leisure, therapeutic, and other purpose that require kinesthetic sense. Manipulative, it only means that anything or kahit anong mga bagay that, that um, we use our sense of touch. Kahit anong mga bagay na ginag uh, ginagamit natin yung ating kinesthetic sense or ating sense of touch. Whether ang goal natin is for uh, educational, informational, di ba? leisure, therapeutic, and other purposes. Now, let us define manipulative media in the context of education. So, as you can see here sa picture, di ba? manipulative media in the context of education it means anything that helps the learners learn certain concepts, certain concepts or ideas by manipulating any objects. Okay? It refers to items or tools used to aid in hands-on learning. Okay, just like that example, diba? Mga building blocks, diba? Moreover, they supplement information for the visually impaired. Yeah, ito yung isa sa mga pinakasikat na manipulative media for education, yung braille material for visually impaired individuals. Kasi diba, they're just using their sense of touch. Yung mga dots dyan, kung familiar kayo or nakakita na ng braille, ang naka-embose yan sa paper and yung pagkakaayos nun, may nire-represent siyang letter sa ating alphabet para mas madali itong mabasa ng mga visually impaired. Okay? Now, alam niyo ba na during the ancient civilizations, meron na talaga manipulative media. They use manipulatives as aid in concretizing abstract ideas such as mathematical computations. So therefore, yung mga sinaunan tao, yung manipulatives nila, ang goal nila is for computing. It's more on computing. Now I'm going to show you an example. We have here the kipu. Ayan, first time ko rin yung narinig, yung kipu. Ayan, ganyan yung itsura niya. It's just strings and knots. Mga um, lubin na mayroong mga buhol. It's a device with numerous colored and knotted strings. It started in ancient uh, America. Sa bandang America siya ginamit nung sinipo ng mga panahon. And yung kipu, ginagabit niya ng mga shepherd for counting herds. And also, for record keeping. Until now, I, uh, according to my research, hindi pa rin ganon ka-concrete yung idea kung paano ginagamit ang kipu. Kasi depende doon sa uh, community or sa society kung saan nila ito ginagamit. Pwede kasing bilang ng mga tao or may nare-represent din siya mga information, certain information. Next is, ito, pinakasiga, the abacus or Soroban. It's a beaded device used for mathematical computations. Abacus uh, ginamit sa Japan. Pinakasikat siya sa Japan kasi until now, uh, tinuturo pa rin siya sa mga uh, Japanese na mga bata. Kasi in, with abacus, mas na-enhance ang kanilang mental math, mental computation na kahit malaki yung numbers, kaya nila itong i-compute. Hindi kailangan ng calculator. Next is the idea. Did you know that the idea uh, that manipulatives can be used for educational purpose dates back to the 18th century by the name of Johann Heinrich Petzstalozzi. Yeah, siya yung father of manipulative media. Sa kanya nagsimula yung idea na mahalaga na ang mga bata ay bibigyan natin ng mga manipulative objects para mas makonkretize ang kanilang knowledge. Okay? And sinundan naman ito, 
ni Friedrich Frobel. He's the creator of the world's first kindergarten in 1837. He supported the Petzalos' idea and made sure that his school are filled with play objects for his pupil. Now, alam niyo ba na ang word na kindergarten ay nanggaling sa salitang Garden of Children. Yung school na tinayo ni Friedrich Probel, ang ginagawa ng mga bata doon, they just explore the school. They learn by themselves. So, ano na role ni teacher at ng parents? Their role is to guide the child towards learning. So, hindi lang natin sila basta hahayaan. Kailangan natin silang i-guide kung ano yung mga pwede nilang gawin na may enjoy nilang gawin. Okay, so si Friedrich pala ang naka-invent ng salitang kindergarten. Now, si Friedrich Probel, siya din ang gumawa ng tinatawag na 20 gifts. He designed the 20 gifts to help children recognize and appreciate patterns and forms found in nature. That is the first educational toy. So, kung titignan nyo, di ba? It's just, um, kahoy lang siya. It's more on puzzle. Yan yung unang educational toys na gawa ni Friedrich Probel. And another one, another na tao na kilala sa, manipulative, sa paggamit ng manipulative media in the context of education is si Maria Montessori. She developed this concept and came up with materials to help children develop their sensory abilities, put them in control of the learning process, enables them to learn through personal investigation and exploration. So, sino sa inyo naka-attend uh, na school or um, pumapasok or naggaling sa isang private school na Montessori? Diba? So, ibang-iba siya sa private setup, sa mga ibang skwelahan, lalo sa public school. Kasi mga Montessori school, it's more on allowing children to do the things that they love to do and na-observe ni Maria Montessori na mas hilig ng mga bata na gawin yung mga practical things such as maglipit mga gamit, magpurong. So, hindi, yung, hindi masyado napansin yung mga uh, toys or other things. Pero yung mga practical things, yun ang kanilang mga ginagawa. Next is si John Piaget. Yan, isa sa mga pinakakilala nating pangalan. Si John Piaget, he theorized that children must first construct knowledge through concrete operations before moving to formal operations. So, according naman kay John Piaget, ang mga bata ay may pinagdadaan ng mga stages. So, ito nga yan. Meron siyang tinatawag na sensory motor stage. Sisimula from age 0 to 2, where the child begins to interact with the environment. Ayan, babies pa. So, kung mapapansin natin yung mga babies, di ba, mahilig silang uh, maghablot na lang na kung ano-ano kasi dun pa lang nila pinifigure at ano ba yan, di ba? Ano ba yung shape niyan? Ano yung feeling kapag hinawakan yung rattle? Ano yung tunog? Ayan. They are just interacting with the environment. Yun yung sensory motor stage. Next is the pre-operational stage. From age 2 to 6 or 7, the child begins to represent the world symbolically. So, kung mapapansin natin, yung mga batang ages 2 to 6 or 7, mas gusto nila yung role-playing games like bahay-bahayan, doktor-doktoran, and all. Okay. Next is the concrete operational stage from ages 7 to 12. Or... Where the child learns rules such as conservation, okay, dito naman sa age na to, nagiging um, palatanong na yung mga bata. Bakit nung sinalin ko yung tubig sa ganitong baso, klaseng baso, dun sa basong matangkat, e ganun pa rin yung sukat. So, nagiging uh, matanong na sila in that way, pinifigure out yun nila by themselves. Next is the formal operational stage. Ito adulthood na to. So, from 12 to adulthood. The adolescent can transcend the concrete situation and think about the future. Yan. Diyan yan papasok yung decision making and maturity. So, yun yung mga taong kilala na gumamit, naniniwala sa manipulative 
Meaning the power of manipulative media in education. Sabi nga dito sa famous uh, Chinese proverbs, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. So, yan yung leveling na um, way paano mas matututo ang mga bata. Ba? Kapag um, involved sila sa learning, pag sa kanila mismo nang galing or natutunan nila by themselves, mas natatandaan nila ito. So, let's proceed with the classifications of manipulatives. So, meron lang tayong dalawang klase ng manipulatives. Una ay ito. Yan. Ang tawag dyan ay? If you want to answer, just type in the comment section. Start with T, R, A, D. Okay. So, kung yung sagot ay traditional, you are correct. So, pag sinabing traditional, it's purely manual, tulad niyan, yung representation and digestive system, yung field trips, additional, manipulative media. Next is, yan. Start with D. Kaya yan. Digital. Okay, so any applications or softwares that is installed on software or laptop. So let's define traditional or concrete manipulatives. So or it refers to those that does not require any digital component to function. So to nga na binanggit ko kanina, so hindi siya power operated, battery operated, it's purely manual. The example nga niyan, yan. We have the real objects, models, and field trips. Next is the digital or virtual manipulatives. These are computationally enhanced version of traditional manipulatives. So, kung mapapansin nyo sa digital, meron din, it's an enhanced version ng mga traditional toys natin. So, for example, yung um, jigsaw puzzle, di ba? Meron talagang traditional na jigsaw. Pero meron din jigsaw puzzle na digital na nai-install sa ating mga cellphone. Now, sa digital or virtual manipulatives, may kaklasipay natin siya into two. May tinatawag na concrete manipulatives. It allows actual hands-on manipulations. And yung tinatawag na virtual manipulatives, these are interactive, web-based, visual representation of a dynamic object. So, yung concrete manipulatives, usually, um, it's a gadget. So, merong specific na function. Just like that example, meron dyan Tamagotchi, may brick game, may robots, diba, so robotics. And sa virtual manipulatives, it's an application or software installed that should be installed in a computer or cell phones. So, proceed tayo is traditional and manipulatives. Ano nga ba yung mga advantages and disadvantages? So, start tayo sa advantages. First advantage is that it's simpler and more movable. Diba? Talaga naman, kahit saan, pwede na sandalin. It's tactile. Concrete experience adds a dimension of learning kasi tayo mismo ang nagmamanipulate. It fosters creativity. Process is traceable. Allows trial and error. Halimbawa sa jigsaw, nagkamali ka ng buhok. So pwede mo siyang nasirain at buhin ulit or hanapin yung mga parts. Units are easier to distinguish, making the whole easier to see. It's easier to relate to real-world application. Another advantage, it is less expensive than digital technology. Karamihan ng mga traditional toys, uh, media natin, ay mas mura unlike digital manipulatives. It requires more thinking. It's self-paced kung kailan mo lang gustong gamitin or laro eh. It's multi-sensory approach. Use different senses, diba? touch, hear, and the like. Clarifies misconceptions and builds connection concepts and representations, encouraging more precise and richer understanding. So when it comes to the quality of learning, diba? we go to traditional manipulatives. Uh, as you can see, meron lang siyang dalawang disadvantage. First, it is limited. Okay, and second, it is not very challenging. So, bakit siya tinawag na it's not very challenging? Okay, for example, yung uh, Rubik's Cube, 
yun lang yung pwede mong gawin sa kanya. Unlike mga digital manipulatives, minsan kasi meron siya mga kasama pang mga applications or software. So, meron options. Okay, now let's go with the digital manipulatives advantage and disadvantage. So, start tayo sa advantages. The feedback is immediate. Diba? If your answer is correct, diba, makikita nyo agad may check mark or you are correct. Meron agad na magsasalita ang gano'n. It's immediate. Next, it's easier to maneuver and keep together kasi nasa isang uh, gadget lang siya or nasa isang mobile phone lang siya. It offers a larger variety of experiences. So, marami mga options, buttons, allows more complex operations to be learned. It catches the attention of the technology generation. Yung generation natin ngayon. Kung bibigyan natin sila ng dalawang klase ng laruan, traditional or digital, most of them will choose digital. Since sanay na talaga sila na meron ng technology. Disadvantage, it cannot be actually touched. Okay? It's a simulation. Or it's on the screen. It sometimes force one to think abstractly. Kasi nga, it's simulation lang. So, lagi lang, ito yung itsura ng clouds, di ba? More on representation. Next, it's more suitable for use after a student has already mastered the concept. Some make it too easy. So, baka siya sinabi na ganun, some make it too easy. Kasi may mga games or manipulative media na may tinatawag na hint or reveal kapag hindi mo na siya talaga mahulaan. Computers do not work for the students, so they are able to guess the correct answer. Another advantage, it's more accessible at home, lalo ngayon sa panahon natin. Pandemic, lahat tayo nasa loob na ng bahay, so available lang natin manipulatives, karamihan ay siya ang ating mga cellphone or computer. Kaya it's more accessible. It gives step-by-step -step instruction. So, sa bawat um, digital manipulatives, lagi siyang may instruction or guide paano gamitin. It often provides explicit connection between visuals and symbolic representations. Meron siyang legend palagi. Na kapag pinindot mo tong green button na merong uh, triangle, it means start. ba? So, ganun. So, meron siyang mga symbols that end representations. Now, another disadvantage is it may limit the teacher's ability to follow the student's thought processes. Kasi nga, uh, self facia it takes away the notion that hands and mind must work together. Kasi minsan, yung mga bata, uh, sa kagustuhan nila na mag-proceed na sa next level, hindi na ganoon uh, inuunawa yung stage for stage na dinaanan dun sa isang game or sa isang educational app. It might feel like do versus learn or explore. Yun niya. So, ang aim nung iba na lang is just to finish but not to learn or explore. It doesn't really make one find the answer on his or, or her. Okay, so that is manipulative media. And those are the advantages and disadvantages. Now, let's proceed with the multimedia. So, bakit nga may tatawag na term na multimedia? It is the integration of multiple forms of media. It generally include text, graphics, audio, and video set in digital format that enables virtual manipulation. Multimedia is a combination of two words, multiple, diba? Multi, a prefix means more than one, media. So, ano yung more than one media na yun na kinumbine? It's the text, graphics, audio, and video. It's set into digital format. Okay? It enables the user to virtually manipulate it. Okay? So, karamihan na ng mga content ngayon is multimedia. So, dito, ito yung mga iba't ibang media na bu uh, bumubo sa multimedia. We have here the text, audio, visuals, the animation or motion, and manipulative. So, ano yung kaya yung missing dito sa circle? Dito sa gitna. 
pinaka-importante yung aspect sa multimedia is the people. So, bakit nasa gitna? Kasi tayo ang nag-o-consume at nag-produce ng multimedia. So, for our activity, to check if you really understand our lesson today, let us identify the primary dimensions of the following applications. So, write lang yung text, visual, audio, motion, or manipulative sa ating module. So, nandiyan yung sa ating module yung activity na yan. Let's start with number one, Spotify. Yan. Alam kong kilalang kilala niyo yan. So, Spotify, ano kaya yung pinaka-primary? or pangunahing dimension dito. Type in the comment section to participate. Okay, so if your answer is audio, you are correct. Spotify, it's a music application. Diba? Next is Instagram. So what do you think is the primary dimensions of this application? It's visual kasi we the aim of the Instagram is to share uh, photos of our pictures, images, and videos. Next is Twitter. What do you think is the primary dimension? Okay, if your answer is text, you are correct. And Twitter, it is a... Uh, it keeps the person, the mga followers, updated with our tweet. Short updates. Yeah, it's text. Next is the Talking Tom application. Hmm, ano nga kaya yan? Manipulative. So, bakit siya more on manipulative? Kasi si Talking Tom nang gagaya ng salita. Pwede mo siyang paliguan, pakainin, di ba? Ikaw, nasa iyo yung control talaga. Kay Tom, kung paano siya uh, kikilos doon sa app. Next is the Gmail. Gmail is the exit. We receive and send emails. Next is Viber. Okay, it's audio. Next, Wattpad. Yeah, text. Wattpad, I text. Mobile Legends. Yeah, kailan kailan niya? Manipulative. Kasi, pag hindi niya siya ginalaw, yung mga characters, AFK. Madedefit tayo, di ba? So, it's purely manipulative. Next is the YouTube. Motion. Kasi, it's more on video. And last, Pinterest. Visual. Okay, so thank you po doon sa mga nag-participate sa ating live, okay? Now, let's go with our assessment. So, sa ating assessment sa module, you will design your own game application. So, isip lang po tayo, let's visualize a game that is fun and educational at the same time. So, paano natin yung gagawin? So, dito sa ating module, kung hawak nyo yung module, so, isip tayo ng pangalan ng ating game. So, for example, ang example sa module ito, Subway Server. So, sulat nyo lang yung title, concept. So, you need to explain the main premise or story of your game. So, example, dito sa Subway Surfer, it is an endless game as Subway graffiti artist vandalizes a train and the grumpy inspector and his dog chases him. So, that is the concept of the game. Makatakbo ka pala yun sa umahabal sa'yo. And the objective is to earn points. Yeah, so, sulat nyo yung objectives, earn points, and prizes by picking up the points and items on the subway track. Avoid obstacles along the way. Next is, ano yung educational value nito? It's a pinaka-importante aspect na inyong gagawin para sa ating assessment. Ano yung educational value? So, subway server can help you improve your reflexes, improve your precision, and practice quick thinking. Remember to establish your target audience who would most likely play this game. So, banggitin din dito sa part na to kung sino yung target user nyo ng inyong game app na gagawin. And the interface, design how your game would look like, character items. So, drawing lang tayo kung ano yung nabivisualize nyo na 
came up. Di ba? Malay nyo, kapag ka-graduate nyo ngayon, senior high school, makagawa kayo ng sarili yung game or sa college, pag nag-take kayo ng IT or any courses related to programming, di ba? Mobile uh, games, uh, game development, Android development, yung ginawa nyo yung assignment ngayon or assessment ay maisa ka to para nyo na in the future. Yan. So, i-drawing nyo na ano yung na-imagine yung game para sa ating assessment. Okay. So, that ends our discussion for today para sa ating week 7. So, let me leave you with this quotation. Sabi nga, di ba? Do not educate your child to be rich. Educate them to be happy. So, when they grow up, They'll know the value of things and not the price. Sabi nga, happiness is always a choice. Please choose to be happy every day. So God bless everyone. Thank you so much for listening. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you may email us at edtech at deped.gov.ph. So baybayan po natin yung mga susunod pang tutorials. We have the house, general chemistry. And tomorrow, we have Mappy Tuesday and Choose English Day. Thank you so much. God bless everyone.